Okay, here we have a, a difficult problem, and there, there are definitely some, some doozies or some difficult problems on the GRE, so this is one of them. We have 1 over 2 to the 11th times 5 to the 17th. You can already notice, oh my god, look at those ugly numbers, how big these numbers are. But actually, of course, very, this is a very small, tiny number because all this craziness here is going on in the denominator. So what they want to know is this number is expressed as a terminating decimal. Even that sounds horrible, but don't worry, it's not that bad. How many non-zero digits will the decimal have? So when something is expressed as a terminating decimal, go here, it's, let's just say 0.1, it stops right there. It doesn't just keep going, going on, though it could, but it just stands boom, right there where it needs to, which doesn't really matter because we're just looking for the non-zero digits anyway once you figure this out. So you can run to your calculator, maybe try to do this and see if you get the answer. And they, however, choose these really, really large numbers, so you can't actually rely on the calculator. And hence, most people get this wrong. And they're probably very upset when they realize the calculator does not accommodate all of these exponents. So what do we do? Look for patterns. Two and five, they go together so nicely, don't they, when you multiply them. Why? Because two times five is 10. And when we have tens, especially when we have tens down here in the denominator, we get lots of zeros to the right of the decimal. But how many zeros? What's going on here? How many tens do we have? So if I write this out and I say 1 over 2 to the 11th times 5 to the 11th times 5 to the 6th, I really haven't changed anything. Notice that here the bases of the 5 are the same. So 11 plus 6 is 17. That takes us back here. I'm not violating anything mathematically, but I'm rearranging it to give us 2 to the 11th times 5 to the 11th, which is 10 to the 11th, basically a bunch of zeros. Now, we don't care about the zeros, we care about this stuff. What is 5 to the 6th? So maybe now you can run for your calculator, but we can also think of this as 1 over 5, 6 to the 6th power, and 1 over 5 is what? It's 0.2. And when you make that conversion, you can see that easy way of doing things, then this becomes a much easier problem. What is 0.2 to the 6th power? Well, it's sort of like 2 to the 6th, or getting rid of the decimal there, but not really, just ignoring it. 2 to the 6th is 64. When you have the decimal there, obviously, you have to put the decimal to the left somewhere here of the, oops, uh, there we go, to the left of the 64. There, are, of course, are going to be a lot of zeros, though, but that doesn't matter because we only care about the non-zero digits. So we add all these zeros to these zeros, and we don't really care because we just have six and four. And how many digits do we have? Well, that's just a total of two non-zero digits. And that's just like that, B is our answer. Now, had this been, let's just say, had this been seven, then, well, we get point two to the seventh, but then what happens? Well, two to the seventh is 128. Here, of course, we're falling by all these zeros, but now we would have three non-zero digits. But I guess the GRE in this case was somewhat nice. They just stopped at six, and that left us with two non-zero digits. Answer choice B, and there it is.